Let's get going. Welcome back to the Goal Set Mindset Podcast, everybody, for a special edition. I am here with my dad. Dad, thanks for joining me. Well, you're very welcome. Thanks for being here this weekend. We are up in beautiful Hampton, New Hampshire. Beautiful Hampton, New Hampshire. Had a nice walk at the sunrise this morning. I think it was 25 degrees when we got out there. Yeah, give or take. A nice warm day here in February. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. We shouldn't be, I shouldn't be complaining. Um, Cool. And Dad, today is a very special day. Today was day 1000 of my morning gratitude journaling. So I'm really excited to kind of discuss that a little bit today and actually have um, myself on the other side of the microphone, you asking me questions and us getting to have a little bit of a, a discussion about this. It, it's amazing that it's been a thousand days, almost three years. And um, ironic that it came up on, on this weekend um, that we actually just happen to be together. So uh, thank you, universe, for <laughs> bringing this all together and bringing it into focus. So probably the best way to start, Julie, why don't you take us back to the beginning? What was your motivation, your inspiration, and what got this ball rolling 1,000 days ago today? Yeah, pretty crazy. I can't believe it's four digits now. Um, so my first day of morning gratitude was on May 25th of 2020. And as you can imagine, the time that you know, hey, Patricia, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in. Um, May of 2020, we all know there was a lot of, of chaos happening in the world and not just in my greater environment. Um, you know, school got changed to virtual and our normal life just wasn't normal anymore. But also in my immediate personal environment, um, I had just recently come to spend time with you, Dad, living at your apartment at the time, which was just outside of Philly, um, King of Prussia, PA. And during that time, in the midst of all the unrest in the world, you were also going through some pretty significant um, health issues. Yes. You can elaborate on that a little <laughs> bit, as much as you're willing to share. Well, I was at that point, it was in May, so I was eight months out from prostate cancer surgery. And unfortunately, it had a series of complications following it and had just been down to the DC area where my surgeons were located, had a procedure and was hoping that that was gonna be good for a while. Unfortunately, it, had, it wasn't. And we'll backtrack three months prior to that. Um, I was diagnosed with a fairly significant blockage of my LAD artery. That's the main artery that runs down the front of your heart. They also refer to that as the widow maker. So, with COVID precautions in place at most hospitals, all the hospitals in Maryland, my cardiology team told me that it was an elective procedure and I'd have to wait it out until they reopened. Uh, fortunately, I was in the King of Prussia area, at, right near the Bryn Mawr Hospital. And when I ended up in the ER because of the um, urology procedure, the doctors took a look at my health chart asked me why I had not gotten the cardiology straightened out. <clears throat> and then they very eloquently explained to me that at Bryn Mawr Hospital, doctors make medical decisions, administrators have fundraisers, and they were gonna fix me. And a month later in June, um, I got fixed. Had an angioplasty, Dr. Manglamurdi, shout out, uh, got me straightened out, and the day after the procedure, Julie and I went out for a three mile walk when I had a hard time walking 200 yards without the angina getting in the way. So truly a blessing. Um, that month that Julie came to, to stay with me, that you came to stay, um, was very comforting to know that I had somebody right nearby. Uh, the building I lived in was not gonna be easy to find me, God forbid something did happen, and fortunately it did not. So Julie and I kind of began this, this gratitude journey together. Um, she formalized it by way of the journal that we're talking about today. Um, for me, it's just a, every morning I wake up is a good day. And six months later, I was able to move to this beautiful place that has become such an inspiration and such a motivation for healthy living and absolute gratitude. Yeah, wow, thanks for sharing, Dad. And it is, it's amazing how all of that unfolded and thank God for where you were living at the time, having those doctors who were like, screw all of these rules, this is not an elective situation, this is a, a medical emergency. And from my point of view, where we're kind of getting at here is I started this gratitude practice amidst a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear. 
honestly not so much about the world around me, much more in my immediate environment and about my dad's health. And at the time that I moved in with you, you were um, having these complications from the surgery. That's what brought me there. But all I could think about, and this is where it's a blessing and a curse being a medical professional when you have a family member who has something going on, all I could think about was how we knew you had this blockage, but we didn't know how severe it was. You had gotten to the point in your stress testing where they said, hey, you've got a blockage, it needs to be addressed. But via the stress test, they couldn't tell the, the percentage. And it wasn't until you were in the hospital that they took a close enough look and said, whoa, what was it, 90%? 85%. Yeah, 85%. And you know, for me, as a, a physical therapist, um, one of the most remarkable experiences that I had in physical therapy school during cadaver dissection was actually seeing arthrosclerotic plaque in person. And the, the cadaver that I had worked on, the heart, she had heart disease and ended up having a stroke. And I felt with my own hands what it felt like to have an artery blocked. And all I could think about in these days was that existing inside of my dad. Um, so that being said, you know, May 25th at that point, you had not gone back into the hospital. None of this stuff had been resolved yet. And right. each day I was trying to find a way to focus on joy. And at this point I had been about, I'd say two years into really getting interested in podcasts and personal development and um, mindset. And I'd heard about gratitude. There's a specific author, Rachel Hollis, who spoke a lot about it. And I was like, you know what? Let me give this gratitude thing a try. I'm going to go to Target and get a cute little notebook because where else do you go during COVID? You go to Target. And I came back and I was like, dad, check it out. I got this in the dollar section and I'm going to write down five things I'm grateful for. We're going to shoot for 30 days. And during that time with you, you know, we were living together in a one bedroom apartment and I was sleeping in the living room and just grateful to be by your side. Um, but the challenge of waking up each day and finding five things in my immediate environment that I was grateful for was was difficult, um, but also taught me a lot. No, those were, you know, very very interesting times, and you know, we didn't know where things were going at that point. You know, the um, the Philadelphia area and specifically Montgomery County where we were living uh, was really under a heavy cloud of COVID. Um, lots of, of deaths in congregate care facilities. It was spreading within the population. And there was really not a lot of indication of when this was going to get better or if it was gonna get better. So a lot of anxiety. Um, and again, just my, my personal situation, you know, trusting that it was not my time. And fortunately it was not. And June 16th, which happened to be my paternal grandmother's birthday, um, it all got better. So. Uh, stubborn faith and you know persistent trust uh, definitely helped um, and a great great you know a great period of time that we were able to share uh, together and I still remember you know walking out and you and I taking that first three mile walk and just being amazed at, at, at how wonderful modern medicine is so a lot to be grateful for yeah cool I'm glad that feeling is mutual then yeah, and one of the things that you know, I also kind of wanted to talk about that I get asked a lot is um, around consistency with this practice. And like my initial goal was 30 days, and I hit that, and then you know, I I made my way to 100, and since then it's just truly become a habit. And you know, Dad, in your experience, like especially with with your way of practicing gratitude, which is honestly going to the sunrise each day, and just kind of being present. Um, how has that been with like staying consistent with that? Like, is that something that there are days where it's hard to get up and do that? Or do you feel like it's pretty seamless at this point? Well, at, at this point, it's, it's very seamless. And, and in fact, you know, we amongst us who, who gather at the beach on a regular basis, um, we always smile and, and kind of share the thought that I've never gone to the beach and regretted getting out of bed. There have been days where I've stayed in bed and regretted not being at the beach. So at this point, um, you know, Saturday morning, uh, Friday night, I picked you up at the airport. We got back about 1230. It was well after one o'clock before I fell asleep. But when the bell rang, I was out there at 530 in the morning to see it come up again. Um, for me, it really is, is a combination of, of a, you know, a spiritual moment, a moment of reflection, 
and a way just to be grateful that um, my path has led me to this just spectacularly beautiful place with surrounded by wonderful, you know, like-minded people. Um, if I had any reason to, to forget about gratitude for a day, I'm reminded every morning, you know, when I see that sun come up. Um, now, Julie, let's turn this back to you a little bit. Uh, you know, how, how has this changed your, your day-to-day, your, your everyday life, you know, knowing that this, you know, couple of minutes of sitting with your book, with your pen in hand, and I think you told me you're now on your third actual physical journal. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So as you complete those pages each day, how has that changed the way that your days begin and your days go? Yeah, that is a great question, Dad. And a lot of people ask me too about my gratitude notebook and it's it's always small. This is the third edition and each volume of gratitude, if you will, has gotten slightly larger um, as I realized that I, I like to write longer and longer notes. <laughs> but um, yeah, the biggest change that I've experienced that I think is the really cool thing about gratitude is that it just helps you bring more awareness to the present and the really joyful little sprinkled moments of your day that are something that we really should appreciate. One thing that I've read about gratitude is that it has this really cool impact on your brain and your nervous system. And similarly to how we train our physical self, we go to the gym and we work out three to four days a week and we do bicep curls until eventually you can do heavier weight and more sets and more reps and then you grow your bicep muscle. Gratitude makes very similar changes in the brain where when you practice this regularly and either write it down or share it, um, it actually creates new neural connections in those happiness centers of the brain. So it's almost like muscle hypertrophy for your emotional brain which I think is the coolest thing in the world. And, you know, to back that, I can say that in my day to day, it just simply makes it easier to notice and to truly feel joy throughout your day. So I'll give an example, like one thing that a lot of people do in the mornings, yourself included, is go for a walk and, you know, go outside and get some movement in. And when we do these walks day to day to day, it's easy for them to feel repetitive and maybe boring or it's the same thing. But when you embody gratitude, your brain is kind of always seeking something new, something to pick out, something to feel happy about. It might be a particularly warm day. It might be a stranger that walks by you and says hello. Um, It might be, you know, a little bit more of a quiet day than normal. And I'm able to kind of pick out these moments throughout the day that I never would have noticed before, simply because I've trained my brain to look for them. And you've said this to me before, Dad, too, like when we just think about the law of attraction and the universe, like what you are seeking will find you. So when you commit to a gratitude practice and you put out into the world that that's something that you're seeking, I'm very confident that you're going to find it. Well, do you ever take time to look back over your journals and reflect upon, you know, either specific days or just in general, you know, looking back to see what has shown up in your life to be grateful for? Yeah, no, I definitely do. And it's it's funny you mentioned that because last night or Friday night when I was waiting at the airport, I was actually flipping through this current journal, which started back in July of 2022. Um, and it was really cool reading back on when I had moved to Maryland and how before I had even met the friends that I met and, you know, started my job. Um, there's just these little things about about Maryland that I enjoyed. And it's cool like gratitude not only helps you live in the present and feel joy in the present moment, but when you journal it and you write it down and then you can reflect on it, it takes you back to those times where you're like, oh, I did really enjoy that and I did really appreciate that. And I think a lot of times when we reflect in life, we reflect on like negative events, things that happen to us that we wish happened differently. But when you journal about gratitude and you can look back on these happy moments it's like wow like life is pretty good and like i can't believe i got through that and and got to where i am today you know so are there recurring themes that when you look back and reflect and and i know you haven't done an an exhaustive reflection or assessment of of three years and a thousand entries but are there themes that keep coming up that you've noticed over and over that, that show up on a regular basis 
Yeah, I think so. And that's actually one of the struggles, I think, of, of gratitude and especially like sharing it each day is sometimes I write the same thing like a lot. <laughs> like I mentioned the morning walks. That's just something that we share in common. I love getting outside first thing in the morning. So typically when I do that, something about that morning walk is going to end up on my gratitude list. And the cool thing about the way that I practice gratitude and that I encourage others to do is that you focus in on the previous 24 hours so that you have to stay grounded in the now and not just write big things like, you know, my family or my house or like those are great things to be grateful for. Don't get me wrong, but it's much more meaningful and intentional when you zone in. Um, But yeah, dad, and I love when I reflect on that because when I see those trends, it's also a lesson to me to spend more time doing those things. Like when I read about how many times I've written sunlight or sunshine or the sun, it's crazy. I do it all the time, but it's a sign of like, oh, that's something that fills my cup. That's something that like ignites my soul. That's something that I should be doing. And also people in my life, you know, like I am very blessed. I have a wonderful boyfriend who treats me very well. He's on the gratitude list a lot. Um, Friends who have come into my life. It's just, it is a cool way to kind of track what brings you joy and then give more attention to those things now you've been very open about this you you've been sharing this on social media really from day one um and some of these things you know are are deeply personal and and some of them are are lighthearted, but it does create a certain level of vulnerability And, and how how have you handled that yeah that's definitely one of the harder parts i think especially since i'm starting to gain a little bit more of a following on social media just with like all the networking that I've done. And there are times that I sit down to write in my journal and I have a thought and I just can't write it in the way that it comes to my head. Um, Of course, some of that might be like intimate moments, but a lot of times it's just about a specific person or a specific conversation that is private that I just want to share. Um, I work in healthcare. There's times where a very specific patient comes to mind and I can't write their name. So you'll see me write my patient, my patient, my athlete, things like that. So I definitely have to be kind of like um, a little more thoughtful of how I write things. But the vulnerability piece, it's definitely gotten easier over time because that's something that I try to embrace in, in everything that I do. And it's just weird, Dad, I think, how we like are so nervous to share emotions as humans. Like not just on social media, but in general, we, I feel like a lot of us carry ourselves in this way where we try to keep emotions hidden, whether they're good or bad. And even like things like joy and gratitude and love, I felt nervous sometimes about posting good things that happened to me because of being worried about people being like, oh, she's being a show off or like, oh, she's always talking about how much she loves her job or something like that. And I've definitely gotten to the point where I don't worry too much about that because I think about how one person might read that and say, wow, I love my job too. Or like, wow, I went for a run this morning too and I also got a best time and that also felt really good. So I think that's the hardest part for me is like trying not to care what other people think Mm -hmm. about my vulnerability. Yeah, no, and and that's a lifelong lesson. And there's, there's always that thin line, you know, between, you know, putting yourself out there and, and putting yourself out there and being humble about it. And, and I think that's humility is one of those things that as we, we grow older and wiser, that we, we understand the importance of humility. And, you know, being grateful for what we have, grateful for the hard work we've put in to earn what we have. There, there's no, no reason to, to be shameful or to be, you know, insecure about that. Um, but you always want to make sure that you're, you're remembering that humility is important. And, you know, the vulnerability I've said for years that it's it's only through vulnerability that you're able to true, to achieve, you know, true intimacy, that you can really connect with a person when you are taking your guard down, when you are able to show somebody your emotions, when you are able to show somebody that, you know what, I, I do need some help here. You know, I could really use, you know, that 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 connection that we're creating right now. So I, I applaud you at, at the, you know, the, the ripe young age of 25. <laughs> Thanks. That you're you know, figuring some of these things out that took me most of my lifetime to, to figure out and to become comfortable with. So it's, it's exciting 
to see, you know, how this is, you know, presenting itself, you know, in you. And the people that follow you on social media, the people that are closest to you, can't help but join you on this journey um, just simply by following it. Yeah. I also definitely enjoy what you said about humility, and I appreciate that. And I think one thing that I've learned a lot from this practice is also just how much I love people and how much joy I get from just like connecting with people, whether it's a really, really close friend or a family member, or whether it's like the really friendly um, girl who works behind the counter at Blue Harbor Coffee who like talks to you, like things like that. And I think that when you express gratitude for those moments, it adds that layer of humility where it's like gratitude isn't about showing off all these things that you have and all these things that you've done and everything you've achieved. You can be proud of those things and grateful for them, but it's more so about the people in your life and what those people do for you. So that's why I love when I can write specific names in my journal, whether that person sees it or not. Um, it's really cool to flip through and see how many people have, have made me feel grateful um, just simply from their presence, you know? Yeah. I, I believe that we're, we're meant to be social beings and, and you and I are wired very similarly. <laughs> you know, we, we draw upon the energy of others. We, we give our energy to others. And, and that's for, for the work that we both do is really important. And when we get excited, people around us likewise get excited. You think and so? I, I believe so, yeah. <laughs> I, I've, we, we've seen it happen. Um, but you also, by having that energy, by having that open heart, by having that acceptance, you draw people in. And simply a smile and saying good morning to someone can, can immediately spark that, that shared energy. And it's one of the things that I found in, in living here in Hampton because as a community, it's a very open and warm community. People are looking to connect. Um, if I happen to be down at the beach in the afternoon, I have to think really hard not to say good morning to people at 3 o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> because it's such muscle memory to, to simply say those two words with a smile, good morning. But those two words can have such an impact and just open that exchange of energy between people. Um, it's one of the main reasons why I love the second hour of my walk at the beach. The first hour usually in the dark, solitary, reflective, meditative. The second hour is when the other people come out and, and suddenly there is that connection, that the kindred souls, the conversations like we had this morning, um, and they're never planned, they're always randomized and they always have some meaning. There's always some reason that that person and I crossed a path that day. Um, and, and that's wonderful and that's the excitement of getting up every morning and getting out there. Yeah, I agree and I definitely, I think that there are some, I know that there are some people in this world who are genuinely like introverted and aren't as social and excited as we are. And I used to be a lot more um, nervous about how other people perceived my excitement. And there were times in my life, especially in college, and you know, when you're more in that like, when you're more in that environment where you want to conform to the social norm, where I would like hide my excitement and my friendliness because I just kind of thought it was weird. Like, I never wanted to be that weird girl that goes out of my way to say hello or, you know, compliment you or, um, you know, go out of my way to engage. But now that I'm embracing being authentic and, and living my life with gratitude and realizing that gratitude should be shared and just joy should be shared, I am doing those things like, you know, in the gym, walking by a squat rack and kind of pausing for a second as somebody's going for a big lift. And then after they hit it, being like, hey, that was badass. Like, you look great. And nine times out of ten, that person's going to be, like, pumped up. You know, occasionally you might get, like, the leave me alone type of look. <laughs> um, but I feel like most people will appreciate that that person who goes out of their way to engage and just be friendly. Like you said, like, we're designed. And that is so worth doing because that's, like, what we need more of now, right? Like, Dad, you're obviously older than me. Um, do you feel like gratitude and just this shared experience of joy is something that we need now even more so than, you know, maybe when you were my age? Uh, I'm not, I'm going to disagree with you there. I think we've always needed it. Okay. And I think what's, what's nice about your generation and, and what we're doing is that we, we have this vehicle. We, we have social media. There's a way for you to express your joy and gratitude to many people all at once. You know, in my day, it, it really was was face-to-face -face communication or letter writing 
you know, or, you know, email had become something at that point. So I think what's what's different is that you have these vehicles to to really express your gratitude and for it to have a, a wider impact in a quicker period of time. I, you know, I remember people in my life who just seemed so serene and just had a, a happiness about them. Um, and they weren't necessarily older and wiser people. Sometimes there were younger people who who really got it at, at, a, at a point that I had not yet. So I, I think we always need it. I think it is something that's important. And, and I think, you know, maybe as we begin to think about wrapping this up, you know, what would your advice be as far as, you know, is, and I hate to say, you know, why should we do this? Should is not the right word. What would be some good reasons? What are some of the benefits or, or you know, why would somebody begin to do this as you did a thousand years, a thousand years ago? A thousand, <laughs> it feels a, like it. <laughs> a thousand days ago. And in what, what would be if you had to pick, say, three benefits that came out of it very quickly that reinforced this was a good idea? So what would be a good motivation, if you will, yeah. for someone to do this? All right, this? let's see if I could pick up some of your sales skills. I'm going to sell you on gratitude right there now. There we go. Um, one thing that I would say is that it just makes you feel good right off the bat. Um, kind of going back to neuroscience, as much as we like to believe that our brains can multitask, because especially in the culture that we're in now and the this productivity landscape, it's all about being efficient and doing multiple things at once. What they've noticed with the brain and with attention is that attention can truly only be on one thing at a time. Now your brain might dart from thing to thing every second or every couple minutes, making it feel like you're multitasking, but when you practice gratitude and you're writing it down and you're expressing these feelings, that's what you're gonna be focused on. So even if for just a few minutes a day, you can divert your brain's attention to the joy and the gratitude and the things around you that lift you up, why not? You know, like that's, that's going to set you up for a more successful day. And another thing I'll say about gratitude is that there's not really a right or wrong way to do it. My specific practice of doing it in the morning is what I chose simply because I think that the morning is the most likely time that you have control over. I know some people who practice gratitude in the evening and kind of reflect on their day, which I think is wonderful. But think about how much easier it is to like get home late or if somebody needs you or you fall asleep on the couch or something like that happens. Whereas in the morning, morning gratitude goes so well with your morning coffee and your morning sunlight. It's just the best time to do it. Or or lunchtime gratitude, you know, for, for people that sit in an office that, you know, have that hard break at a certain point to step away from what they're doing to kind of get a little bit of a break, get some nourishment in you. You know, that might be a great time to just sit down and get in, into your head a little bit and, and pull out the things that are going well. Pull out what about this day is a good day, even in the midst of chaos and all that happens. So there really isn't a, a right time to do gratitude. It really is what, what fits into your rhythms, what makes sense for you. And I think, you know, we could probably make a case for gratitude at any time. Julie and I are just both wired, you know, as morning people. You know, I love sunrises because to me it's the beginning of a new possibility, all, all things coming up. I see sunsets as beautiful, but to me that's the ending, it's the closing of the day, it's over. So for me, I like beginnings and opportunities. I'm not so good on closings and goodbyes. So again, just the way that my mind works, but gratitude anytime during the day makes sense. Just give it a try. Yeah, cool. And definitely like there's different avenues too. Like I love journals. I have multiple journals for multiple things. So I'm a little bit biased towards writing things down. And it is really cool to create this library of positive thoughts. I mean, doing the math, 1,000 days of five things a day, I have 5,000 joyful moments in that sit in my office behind me on a shelf, um, which is cool. But I also know people who write notes in their phone to practice gratitude, or at the very least, take some time to think these thoughts. Now, it's going to be more powerful if there's some kind of avenue where that gratitude is shared whether it's in writing, whether it's speaking those things, whether it's sending a text message to the person that you think of. Um, but I, I have a quote on, a, on my wall and um, one of the pieces of it is, expressing gratitude and not sharing it is like wrapping a gift and not giving it. And I kind of like that. So 
express your gratitude. Um, Dad, one more lesson that I want to wrap things up here with of why you should practice gratitude. Okay. This is one of my favorite analogies, metaphors um, that I use for gratitude. The whole point of practicing gratitude is to help your brain get better at noticing joy and mm -hmm. noticing things in your environment. When you go car shopping, for example, let's say you're choosing between two different cars. Like when I was car shopping um, a few years back, I narrowed it down to the Hyundai HRV and the Hyundai Kona. Those were like the two cars. Before this time, I hadn't really given much thought to either of those cars and never really noticed them. And then ultimately I decided to get a, a charcoal gray Honda HRV, which is my car now. The day that I came home in that car, everywhere I went, I saw gray Honda HRVs. I was like, where did all of these cars come from? How did I never notice this car or know, know about this car? It was everywhere. And think about your car, the car that you have, you probably see it on the road and you're like, oh wow, there's my car. There wasn't this sudden spike in sales of gray HRVs. It was the fact that my brain didn't really have a reason to think about or notice that thing until I, I gave some attention to it, I gave thought to it, I made a decision, and now they're everywhere. And gratitude is very similar. When you start practicing this daily habit of noticing joy in your environment, you're gonna find joy in the little things. You know, you're going to have the conversation with the person at the grocery store who's checking out your items, who looks you in the eye and is like, how are you today? And you're like, wow, that person was actually really nice and they actually like care. And it's going to compound over and over. Um, and it, it really is the coolest thing in the world. And you don't know it until you experience it. Um, but that law of attraction is pretty real. You've learned well. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. Um, you know, this is something that Julie brought up about a week and a half ago when she recognized counting out the days that she was going to be here on day 1000. Um, and day 1000, I think Julie and I are both in a much more grateful place than we were a thousand days ago. And that's exciting. There's been uh, such great things that have happened in both of our lives over these last um, three years. You know, not the least of which are the people that we've drawn into our lives and that people have drawn us into their lives. And that's for two socially connected, somewhat pathological extroverts like ourselves, um, it's the people in our lives that make the life that much more meaningful. And, and for those of you who are hearing this or seeing this or watching it at some point in the future, thank you for being those people in our lives. We really appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Dad. That is really nice. And, you know, if you're somebody, whether you're in a really good place in life right now and you want to start noticing gratitude more or whether you're at a really hard place in life right now, gratitude is something that can be on board. And Expressing gratitude doesn't mean that the hard times aren't going to be hard. It just helps build up your mind's resilience to handling them. It helps you know that there is a calm beyond the storm. And I still have anxiety. It still comes and goes. And, you know, life isn't always going to be butterflies and rainbows, even when you express gratitude. Um, but it makes it so much more easy to weather those storms when you can kind of ground yourself in gratitude. So thanks for tuning in, everybody, whether you're watching live. Patricia, thank you for all the commentary. Really, really glad you were here. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, I would love to hear your thoughts. You can hit me up on Instagram at goalsetmindset underscore JB. Shoot me a message and let me know if you are deciding to start a gratitude journey. Dad, thank you for being here. This was really fun. 1,000 days. And yes. it all started because of you. Yep. So thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. All right, everybody, we will see you soon.